Now let's talk about average and marginal costs. One quick point, the difference between the word price and the word cost. In English, they're often interchangeable, but in economics they mean different things. Price is what the customer pays the business. That's usually the equilibrium price, that's where supply and demand intersect, but cost is what the business spends to produce the good. So really the word cost is only talking about the business. So now let's talk about these new variables that we're gonna learn. There's a lot of different equations, but you don't really have to memorize all of them. You know, you can kind of understand where a few of them come from, and then the rest you can kind of, you know, manipulate and, you know, deduct from the other ones. So it's all about understanding a few basic concepts and then, you know, uh, the, it should all fall into place. So, first of all, let's look at the difference between fixed cost and variable cost. Now, let's say you have a fork factory. You produce forks. A fixed cost is something that you're gonna, as a business, have to spend the same amount regardless of whether you're making one fork or a million forks. So, for example, rent. If you have rent to pay on your factory, the space that you're renting from some landlord, whether you choose to make one fork in that whole factory space or a million forks, you pay the same amount of rent. So that's really a fixed cost. It doesn't depend on the quantity. So that's really how you can define fixed cost. It's something that does not depend on the quantity produced. Variable cost is simply something that does depend on the quantity produced. So, for example, you'll probably hire more workers if you wanted to make a million pens, uh, forks instead of just one, and that's why labor expenses are a variable cost. And really, at that point, you can kind of, for any single expense that you have, you can ask yourself, will this be more of when I have more forks, or you know, does it not depend? And that's how you can know whether it's fixed or variable. Total cost is just the sum of your fixed costs and your variable costs. If you add those two up, that's really the total cost of making those forks. So now, from that, we now talk about average costs. The average total cost is simply the total cost divided by the quantity. Quantity meaning the number of forks that you made. Average variable cost, as you could probably guess, is VC over Q, and that is FC over Q. So really, that's the thing about these where for all these, the average is simply that divided by the quantity. Now, there's another equation we can come up with. ATC equals AFC plus AVC. So looking at that first equation where the fixed and variable add up to the total, well, the same is true for their averages. The average fixed cost and the average variable cost add up to the average total cost. The reason is simply if you start with this equation, if you divide both sides of this by quantity, here you'll get TC over Q, which is ATC. And here you'll get that whole thing divided by two, which you can split as FC over Q plus VC over Q, and FC over Q is AFC, VC over Q is AVC, so that's how you can come up with this equation. So you technically don't need to memorize it, you can come up with it, but now that you've seen it, you can also use, you can use either one, depending on what you need for that problem. Those are the average costs. Now, marginal cost. You kind of know that that's how much it's going to cost you to make one more fork, right? One more. So that's the change in total cost. How much your total cost change by when you make one more. So that's change in total cost over change in quantity. Now, there's actually two other formulas that also equal marginal cost. Marginal cost also equals change in VC over change in Q because technically this isn't saying that VC and TC are the same thing. Clearly they're, uh, they're off by the fixed cost, right? They're not equal to each other. But the change in total cost must equal the change in VC because FC can change. If you, you know, made more forks, the change in your total cost of fork production is however much your variable cost changed because your fixed cost must not have changed when you made more forks. So that's why these two are going to be the same number. So you can use either one. And this is technically also equal to wage over MPL. And where that formula really comes from is, let's say you wanted to make one more fork and you're wondering what's my marginal cost? How much is it going to cost me to make one more fork? Well, technically, you have to hire another worker. So you're going to have to pay them W. That's just the wage that you're paying them. 
So your cost is kind of W, but that's, that's not just for one fork, that's for however many forks they make. So for example, let's say you're paying your workers $10, so the wage is 10, but that worker, let's say, made 10 forks. Well, then their MPL, what does MPL mean again? It's how many forks the last worker makes. So then that's divided by 10. So you basically pay the worker $10 to make 10 forks. So that's kind of like saying the marginal cost is a dollar, right? For one more fork, you can say it costs you a dollar to make it. So that's where that formula comes from. Now, finally, another formula is that the variable cost is equal to the sum of marginal cost. Now, this formula is weird. I mean, this notation sigma, that just means adding up all the different marginal costs. The way to make sense of this formula is this. If we were the first economists in the world and we wanted to figure out, hey, what are your total costs? Well, one way to think about it is, well, your total costs are your fixed costs, you know, how much rent we're paying in our factory, plus how much it costs to make the first fork, plus how much it costs to make the second fork, plus the third, plus the fourth, and so on. So really, then if we just add up all the marginal costs, that plus the rent we paid at the beginning, that's your total cost, right? That sort of captures every cost that we have. Now, comparing this formula to this, that must imply then that, all right, if you add up all the marginal costs, that must be your VC. So that's that. Now, finally, if we were to look at these, the average total cost, average variable cost, average fixed cost, and the MC, these four, I mean, just if you're looking at the formulas, which one looks like it's the odd one out? Well, the MC clearly looks like it's the odd one out. These are all something over Q. This is changing something. But when we graph them out, it turns out that the odd one out is AFC. If we were to look at the graph of AFC, we'll find that it actually is always decreasing, like this. The reasoning is this. The formula for AFC is simply FC over Q. Now the x-axis is quantity, and the FC, the fixed cost you rent, is a fixed amount. Let's say your rent is $1,000. Then, in that case, what is your AFC if you were to just make one fork? Well then, $1,000 over one, that's $1,000 average fixed cost. But if you were to now just make two forks, well, it's still $1,000. It's still the same numerator, but now divided by two, so now the average is only 500 and so on, as you increase your Q, meaning moving to the right, that's a lower AFC. So that's why AFC keeps dropping. But if you're looking at the other ones, as you increase your Q, you're also increasing your variable costs and your total costs, and so the numerators also will go up when the denominators do. So it's unclear whether it's gonna always go down or go down and go up or, or whatnot. Now the marginal cost Usually, that's kind of like the supply curve, which we've been talking about. Now, we said that the MPL usually decreases, workers become less productive. As a result, you usually have that the MC goes up. The more you want to make, it's going to cost you more and more to make each extra one because, you know, you're paying the worker the same amount, but they're becoming kind of, you know, not as productive. So really, on average, it's, uh, marginally, it's going to cost you more and more to make one extra fork. And so that's the marginal cost. There, it drops a little bit. At first, you know, there's some sort of specialization, you know, two, uh, two workers will probably be a lot more efficient than one worker because they can specialize. So that's why MC drops a little bit. You're getting, you know, lower costs. That's good. But then they start getting each other's way. That's sort of uh, too many chefs in the kitchen. So if you have too many workers, they're sort of butting in each other's way and MC goes up. So it's U-shaped. The other two graphs, ABC and ATC, are also U-shaped. But here's the important relationship between them. ABC looks like this. It's U-shaped, and its minimum is where it intersects with the MC. ATC has the exact same thing. It's always above the ABC, but it's also U-shaped and minimized when it intersects with the MC. Notice also that the gap between ABC and ATC gets smaller. They get closer to each other because their gap is AFC, because AFC and ABC add up to ATC. So their gap is AFC and AFC keeps shrinking. So that's why their gap keeps shrinking as you move to the right. Now, the important relationship here is this. It's that whenever the marginal cost, one more, is... Uh, 
less than the average. So here at the beginning, until they intersect, so let's, let's just focus on AVC for now. Until they intersect, the marginal, the red line here, is below the black line here. And so that's why the marginal is less than the AVC. So when that happens, the ABC, the black line, is decreasing. ABC decreases. And same is true for ATC. If MC is less than ATC, ATC decreases. Now, rather than memorizing this, this is actually a law that's true not just in economics, but in the universe. So let me give you another example where it'll make more sense, an analogy. Let's say you have a group of 20-year-olds, people who on average are 20 years old. You have a large group of them. Now, what happens to the average age of that group when you add a 12-year-old to the group? Well, the average is going to go down a little bit, right? Well, that's because the marginal value, the one that was added, the last one, the next one, $12, uh, 12 years old, was less than the average. So anytime, any, anytime the marginal value, the one being added, is less than the current average, it's going to pull the average down. So the marginal kind of drives the average. So that's why if you look here, if the marginal cost, the cost of making one more fork, is less than the average, that's going to pull, bring the average price down. But then after they intersect, now the marginal, the red curve is above, and that's going to bring the average up. If you add a 40-year-old to the group of 20-year-olds, it's going to bring the average age up. So that's that relationship over there, and same is true for ATC.